Hi, everyone. Welcome to October's edition of the Reading Research Recap. I have a special Halloween costume changing section at the end of this deep dive. So stick around if you are interested in seeing that. But let's jump into this month's deep dive. So as a teacher, it can be really overwhelming and downright scary to figure out which programs have evidence and are feasible to implement and cover all the necessary early literacy skills. That's why I chose this paper for this month, because it did a great job highlighting a program that was effective and feasible at teaching integrated reading and writing instruction. The sample consisted of 248 first and second graders across 10 different teachers in four different schools. Classroom teachers were randomly assigned to either the control group or the SRSD plus group, which consisted of 50 to 60 minutes of teacher led instruction three times a week for 12 to 14 weeks for a total of 36 sessions. The intervention that was used in this study was a program called SRSD+. Now, SRSD has a lot of research evidence behind it already, but the SRSD plus component does not. And the plus means that they incorporated a few additional components in that instructional time, things like spelling, vocabulary, and reading. So what were the results? Well, students in the SRSD plus condition outperformed students in the control condition on a variety of early literacy measures. While those results are pretty strong, there are a few limitations. And one limitation worth pointing out is that there was a heavy use of researcher created proximal measures, tests, or assessments. Now it's easier to show, arguably easier to show student growth gains um, and positive outcomes on researcher created measures versus standardized or norm reference measures. So something to keep in mind, but still I think the practical implications of this study are pretty clear that this integrated reading and writing instruction in the SRSD plus program definitely works. So it's effective, but it's also feasible for teachers to implement. So there is high um, fidelity in terms of teachers implementing this program. All right, that's all that I have for the research section, but let's jump right into the special Halloween segment. And if you know me, there's gonna be at least one costume change in this recap before I end it. And this year I thought I would go as Emily in Paris, but this doesn't quite feel right. This looks a little fake, doesn't it? I think I could do a little bit better. Ah, parfait, say tell mon you. And no, I didn't come to France because of the costume. It was actually the reverse. But while I'm here, I do want to share something with you. And that's the fact that English is actually comprised of a lot of French words due to the Norman invasion, which happened in 1066. This one event led to a whole influx of French words, and it was depicted in the Bayou Tapestry. I'm here in Normandy at the Bayou Tapestry Museum, but they won't let me film inside. So I made a short video instead, and fair warning, it's kind of cheesy, pieced together from different AI um, video creation software programs. It's Christmas Day, 1065, and Westminster Abbey, having just been completed, is being dedicated. But the King of England is too ill to attend, and a few days later, he dies. Harold Godwinson quickly swoops in and claims the throne of England for himself, but he knows that he's just biding his time because his claim to the throne will not go unchallenged. Soon after an ominous sign appears in the night sky, the first attack comes, and it's by his own exiled brother, Tostig Godwinson. But Tostig's army is not large, and Harold is able to fend off this attack quite easily. The second attack comes from the north and is led by the fierce Viking warrior, Harold Hardrop. But Harold Godwinson marches his English army nearly 200 miles north in just four days, launching a surprise attack and stopping the Viking invasion. The very next day, William of Normandy crosses the English Channel, launching the third attack. The English and French armies meet on October 14, 1066, at the Battle of Hastings. As the battle rages on, the French are getting frustrated by repeated failed attempts to penetrate the Anglo-Saxon shield wall. And that's when they decide to try something different. The French feign retreat, and the English give chase, thinking that they've defeated them. 
but it's only a ruse to break the shield wall. Within hours, Harold Godwinson is dead and William of Normandy is now forever known to history as William the Conqueror. After the Norman invasion, French words started replacing Old English words at an unprecedented rate. And today, nearly a third of English words actually had origins in French, with some scholars actually estimating that the true number is closer to two thirds of all English words. All right, I hope you enjoyed this slightly cheesy, but hopefully informative version of the recap. That's all that I have for October, and I'll see everyone in November.